Hey guys, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today we're gonna to talk about Mixer shortcuts. Uh, first, the default ones that are just built into Reaper and then some custom ones that you can set up yourself. And before we get into the tips, I need to mention that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Later in the video, I'll tell you a little bit more about them as well as some of my favorite classes on the site. All right, into the tips. The first one is very simple. If you have multiple tracks selected and you click most of the, uh, the track controls, they will be linked together automatically. You don't need to go through the effort of grouping. So record enable, mute, solo, the effects bypass will all follow that quick group selection as well as the fader levels, the relative fader levels will stay the same when they're all selected. So that's a really quick way to make big changes to your mix. This is one that's probably not so obvious. That's kind of like swipe dragging across different track controls to do it to multiples very quickly. So mute, solo, the monitor enable, the record enable, you can just swipe across real quick and enable or disable those. Onto the faders. Here's my normal speed moving the fader. If I hold down the command key or the control key on Windows, I have finer movement. I have to move my mouse much further to actually make a change. If I'm playing back the track and I want to audition a different level and I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep that level, I can hold down the Alt key or the Option key and pull this down. And as it's playing, um, I can find that, that good balance without changing what's already there. And if I want to keep it, I can just let go of the Alt key, and it'll stay there. But if I let go of the mouse instead, it's gonna snap back to the previous one. So I'll do it again here, I'm holding down Alt, and if I let go of the mouse, it jumps back to its previous level. So it's a quick way of auditioning uh, a change without actually committing it. So if you notice here in the mixer, I've got this little, um, button here that enables me to hide or collapse um, all the child tracks from a folder. And you can do that, you can enable that through the mixer track, clickable icon for folder tracks to show and hide children. So I always have that on, highly recommend using that one. It saves a lot of space in your mixer when you don't need to see those tracks. So let's talk about routing. I'm gonna select two tracks, and if I want these two tracks to send to let's say this acoustic guitar bus, for whatever reason, I'm just using this as an example because it's a close by one. I'm gonna hold down the shift key and drag and drop between uh, one of the selected tracks and the destination track. That's going to put a send on each of those selected tracks to the destination track. So let's do this the other way. We'll go from an unselected track to multiple selected tracks, holding shift and dropping that send there, now this track, the track that I dragged from, has a send to each of these selected tracks. Sending to multiple places uh, very easily just by holding the Shift key. So if I have a send here, what's a quick way of managing this? Shift click, it's going to bypass. Uh, and if we hit Option click, that's going to delete that. We can make a send that also disables the master routing on this track by holding down the Alt key and dragging to its destination. And now if we check the routing window for the, the track we're sending from, the master send is disabled. Now let's move on to effects. So here I've got a couple different effects on a track. I can drag and drop between tracks to copy that effect. I can Alt click or Option click to delete an effect. Shift click to bypass and shift command or shift control on Windows to offline an effect. And there's a very subtle kind of color difference there, but if we look in the effects chain, you'll see more clearly what the difference is. Re-EQ is only bypassed, so that's just turning off this little check mark. But this effect is offline and it's not using any CPU, it's unloaded. It's as if the plugin's not there, but all the settings are intact. So earlier I showed that you could just drag and drop to duplicate, but if you hold down the command key and drop it to the same track, it's just going to duplicate 
that effect, keeping it on the same track. So these two effects are exactly the same. If we go to the master track or any kind of empty area of the mixer, we've got some other options here. Here's one I like to use if I have enough room in the mixer, that's show effects parameters when size permits. So when we enable that, it has this third section here between the effects and the sends. And we can use this for having track controls in the mixer. I'm sure you've seen this before, but just in case, um, here's what it looks like. We're gonna take this gain knob and we'll go to param and uh, show in track controls. And now I've got this gain knob linked to this plugin so I can adjust it here without having to open up the plugin window. And again, there are shortcuts along with this. I can double click to open up that plugin, double click again, we can hide it. Alt will delete that plugin control from the mixer and the track control panel. Skillshare is an online learning platform for creators with thousands of classes on art, graphic design, music, filmmaking, and productivity. Try out Skillshare, click the link in the description, you'll get all access to every single class that they offer for two months. After that, it's just $10 a month if you want to continue. A quick recommendation for your first class, Real Productivity, How to Build Habits That Last. Uh, this is the second course from Thomas Frank. I really loved his first one. I think this one's even better. But besides this class, there are so many other classes on you know, all these different creative fields from animation, creative writing, film and video, um, productivity and marketing. Personally, I learned so much through Skillshare and I'm so happy that they want to sponsor my content. If you wanna check it out, I know that you'll like it. You get access to every single class on their site as well as offline access through their mobile app. It's great if you're traveling, you can learn, and um, it's just a great platform to learn in general because it's so focused on just teaching. There's no ads, there's no other videos to distract from just learning. So let's talk about some customization you can do in here. Um, there's actually menus in here that you can customize. So this is the effects extended context menu and the sends context menu. And let's go, just go to the options menu and the customize menus toolbars. So here's sends extended mixer context. The default has only five uh, menu items. So I've added a lot of different things that uh, really help me manage my tracks. So being able to unmute all the sends or um, copying the selected track sends, pasting, copying the track receives. And these are so helpful when you can't have both of those tracks on screen at the same time. You can select a track, copy its routing, go to your other track and then paste the routing. Uh, this is also really helpful if you're using the grouping window where you have, have all these sorts of things that Lots of little check boxes that you need to, to hit. Uh, you can just copy those settings and paste it to another one. Uh, so that's these copy select a track grouping and paste groupings to select a tracks. If you haven't yet customized this menu, I highly recommend doing so. The same goes for the effects extended mixer context. Uh, the default has quite a few good helpful options here, but some other things like the SWS copy effects chain from select a track, paste, and clear effects chain, I find those really helpful uh, for managing my effects. A while ago, I did a video called Cycle Mixer Views, and that is simply an action that goes through the different views for the mixer. So I'm just tapping my keyboard. I've got this assigned to Command-3, so if I hit it enough times, it's going to hide all the different things in the mixer uh, panel here. Um, show sends, show effects inserts, show effects parameters when size permits. Uh, it will basically toggle these three options in every combination. And so, you know, this is kind of my default view with the mixer and the send, or with the effects and the sends and, and the faders. Uh, here it is with the track parameters, showing just my effects chain, showing just my sends, showing just my effects parameters and then showing just my faders. So I don't use this one all the time, but if you find it interesting, I will have a link to the vi original video where I demonstrated this. And also a while ago, I did a video about 
the hidden effects chain shortcuts in Reaper. That's for when you're in this effects chain window. So I'm not gonna get into that in this video, but I will link to that video if you are interested in finding out more. It's only from about a year ago, so I don't wanna repeat everything from that. So there you go, guys, a whole bunch of tips for Reaper's Mixer. Uh, these are things that I use, things that really speed up my mixing workflow. Uh, I love the customization options that Reaper has, and um, I highly encourage you to customize your Reaper as well. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, and thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter, support the Reaper blog through Patreon, and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. 